Hi friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Train. Today we are going to discuss the topic seed physiology. First of all, let's see what's a seed. Seeds are nothing but specialized dispersal units or they are unit of reproduction of a flowering plant. That is, they are capable of developing into a new plant. We can simply define a seed as a fertilized ovule. Even if an angiosperm or gymnosperm, seeds can develop from ovules. Generally, each seed consists of seed coat, some reserved food materials and an embryo, that is the embryonic plant. That is the future plant in the miniature condition. What is the advantage of seed formation? That is, packing of this embryo into a self-contained seed was one of the many adaptations that freed plants from dependence on water. That is, the evolution of seed plants represents an important milestone in the adaptation of plants to the dry land. The earliest seed plants emerged from spore bearing plants called the progymnosperms, which eventually led to the evolution of gymnosperms and angiosperms. The seeds act as a protective barrier during embryogenesis and also provides nourishment during both embryogenesis and the early germination. The process of germination is coupled with the process of mobilization of the stored reserves and this and this food reserves are stored in several types of tissues now we can see the seed structure and its composition the seeds of different plants may vary in many ways but the basic anatomy remains the same a typical seed consists of tester or seed coat an embryo and some food reserves Seed coat is the outer coat of the seed that protects the embryonic plant. And when the tester or the seed coat may fuse to the pericarp or fruit wall derived from the ovary wall, then a seed is actually a fruit. And some of the familiar examples of two seeds are castor bean, coffee bean, cotton, tomato, brassica species, etc. And the examples of fruits that resemble seeds are buckwheat, cereals, lettuce, sunflower, etc. Next is the embryo. Actually, embryo is the future plant in a miniature condition. The embryo in the seed is made up of embryonical axis. And this embryonical axis contains radical or the embryonic root and plumule, the embryonic shoot. And it may also contain one or two embryonic leaves or cotyledons. In monocotyledons, there is just one cotyledon. Whereas in case of dicotyledons, there are two. Based on, the, based on the number of cotyledons, the plants are classified into monocots and dicots. Next is the food reserve. In some plants, uh, this contains high quantities of starch and will provide a source of food for the developing embryo prior to germination. And this food is present in the cotyledons. Whereas in other plants, this role is performed by an endosperm. The Based on the presence and absence of endosperms, the seeds are classified into endospermic seeds and non-endospermic seeds. Here is the diagrammatic representation of the seed structure. That is, all the seeds are covered by a protective uh, outer layer of dead cells known as the seed coat or grain coat. Then comes the endosperm, which provides food for the developing embryo. In case of endospermic seeds, such as wheat, maize and castor. And in case of legumes, that is, non-endospermic seeds, seeds, the cotyledons, will nourish us the developing embryo. Epicotyl is the region above which the shoot arises or epicotyl is the 
part of the embryonical axis in between the plumule and the cotyledonary node. And in case of hypogeal germination, the epicotyle elongates so that the cotyledons remains in the uh, soil. And the terminal end of the epicotyle is the plumule. While hypocotyle, it is the part of the embryonical axis uh, in between cot cotyledonary node and the radical. And in epigeal germination, the hypocotyle elongates so that the cotyledons come out of the soil. And the terminal end of the hypocotyle is the radical. Now we can see the embryo structure in detail. The embryo has several parts and it will grow from two points only. That is the radical and the plumule. The radical, when it begins to grow, it orients towards the gravity and grows downwards and it develops into roots. While the plumule grow upward and become the shoot. Attached to the shoot is the uh, cotyledons or the seed leaf. The area of the uh, plumule above the cotyledon is epicotyle. Um, when it is exposed to sunlight, it will sprout true leaves so that photosynthesis can take place. And the area of the plumule below the cotyledon is the hypocotyle. Diagram A represents the embryo of a dicot plant and diagram B represents the embryo of a, a monocot plant. A monocot plant have only one cotyledon. The diagram B, the embryo of a grass seed, it contains only a single cotyledon and it is modified to form a scutellum. And this scutellum which forms an interface between the embryo and the starchy endosperm tissue and the basal sheet of the scutellum is elongated to form a coleoptile it's a coleoptile it covers and protects the first leaves while buried beneath the soil under the soil this uh, coleoptile provides a act as a protective cover uh, for the first leaves and the base of the hypocotyle has elongated to form a protective sheet to the radical called the coleoriza. This is all about the embryonic structure of a dicot and a monocot plant. Coming to the summary, we already discussed about testa or the seed coat that is the outer layer of the seed derived from the integument of the ovule and scutellum. Uh, that is a single cotyledon of the grass embryo specialized for nutrient absorption from the endosperm. And comes the radical, that is the embryonic root, usually the first organ to emerge on germination. While plumule, it is the first true leaf of a growing seedling. And coleoptile, it is a modified end sheeting leaf that covers and protects the young primary leaves of a grass seedling as it grows through the soil. Coleoriza, as discussed above, a protective sheet surrounding the embryonic radical. Thank you. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe our channel.